Welcome back guys. Today we're going to be installing the furring strips on the ceiling and the walls. So stay tuned, I'll show you how it's done. So this is going to be what I'm going to use for the furring strips for the ceiling and also for the walls. It's a 1x3. It's a pine from Home Depot. And these are the screws I use, also from Home Depot, number six, inch and a quarter, self-drilling. They're designed for, to go from drywall into metal studs. So we're gonna go from wood into metal studs. So it's perfect, it has like a self-drilling bit on the uh, front of it here. Works great for this purpose. So if you look closely, you can see there's a bunch of holes in the beam here. You want to avoid hitting those. So these are curved a little bit, so you need to kind of push this up here and hold it until you get the first kind of two screws in so it doesn't pull out. Okay, well that does it for all the easy ones, but there's two more, the front of the van and the back of the van that are a little bit more complicated. So we need to add one right over this. You wanna pull this down. You can see the wire here. Make sure we push this wire in. I'm gonna to pop this clip out, push the wire back there, pop all these clips out in there so that um, when I screw the beam over this, it can kind of push up. This this like collapses kind of. So I'm just gonna grab a screwdriver and pop those out. Next, I'm gonna remove this and this guy here. Okay, so I've cut this down to size. I'm thinking I might have to uh, thin it out, but I've showed this before a couple times on the channel. This is where you definitely need your angled drill bit because there's no way to get your drill bit in without it put a link for this uh, on Amazon. Just put your bit in here and uh, you can drive it in like that. All right, well, let's see if this is gonna work now. Now we can check with our level. Oh yeah, that looks good. Okay, good. We could screw the rest of it up. I think that'll do it. Now for the real hard part, we need to add one right here, in the back. So if I take my level like this and measure from the high spot here, it's an inch and three quarters. So that means if I glue a one inch thick piece here, plus the three quarter furring strips, I should end up right at the correct amount. So I think I gotta go buy another piece right now at Home Depot. All right, I'm back from Home Depot and I got the piece I needed, which is a one by four, and it's an actual one inch by four inch wide, whereas a typical one by four would be three quarter inch thick here by three and a half. We're gonna cut this into three pieces because the ceiling's curved and we don't wanna try to curve that piece. So we'll put one here, one in the middle, and then one over here. All right, so this is the setup. We're gonna use this piece of wood to hold it until it dries. And then tomorrow we can come back with the three quarter inch piece over the one inch piece and we'll be right at the correct height. And I'm gonna use the marine sealant I'll put a link in the description for this. This is the strongest adhesive I've found so far. Don't want to get the stuff on your fingers because it does not come off. That's pretty much it. 
I'm just gonna come back and put a little more, fill in the gaps with uh, some more of the sealant adhesive. That'll do it. Now I'll just let this dry overnight and we'll come back tomorrow and I'll show you the next step. Okay, it's now the next day and this is really hardened up nicely. This is by far the best adhesive I've ever used, the marine sealant. So definitely pick yourself up some of these. So let's remove this, see if it's still standing. <laughs> So this piece is going to go over that one, like that, but you can see, like I mentioned before, the roof is curved and we don't want to just push it up there and screw it in. So I'm going to cut a bunch of notches in this so that it flexes much easier. And we can just do that on the uh, miter box here. makes this flex without any strain. So now we can screw this in with just some normal wood screws. You don't need to use the metal, the wood self-drilling screws for this. Actually, it's been a week and a half because I've been in uh, Medellin, Colombia, which by the way is a really cool city if you've ever been. Has anyone in the comments been there? Anyway, this is uh, fully dry now. You can hang all your weight on this. It's not moving at all. This marine sealant is like insane how strong this stuff is. A lot stronger than construction adhesive. So now that all the sealing is done, next I'm gonna work on the walls. What I wanna do, you can see there's this bump out here. What I wanna do is have one flat wall and then uh, two cutouts for the bed on this side and the other side. I've always wondered why they put this bump out here. Then I realized that it's actually for the vans that order a sliding door on the driver's side as well. It's basically the um, cutout for the sliding door, the structural uh, build out for the sliding door. So I want to build this wall out to be as flat as possible. The only little section that's going to stick out is this little bump right here, but I'll hide that. This is where the cabinets are going to go, so that's going to be hidden with the cabinets, so that won't be a problem. So I just need to build it out far enough that it comes past the next highest point, which is right here. And uh, we'll check the depth on that, make sure it clears uh, this, this piece here. For me, I'm not worry, worried about um, losing a little bit of the width in the van, just a couple inches. And then I'll still have it here where the bed is. I'll have a cut out there where it's important, the length of the bed. Uh, but I have done this a different way where I like maximized every inch and I'll put a link to that video in the description down below. But I don't think it's really that important to have an extra two inches of width in this area here. There's plenty of room. But I like to have a uh, straight, smooth wall without any like indents going back and forth, trying to maximize every inch. So I picked up uh, three of these 1x4s from uh, Home Depot and these are the actual 1x4s. And just for reference, this is a normal 1x2 and you can see a quarter inch difference in uh, thickness here. So I'm going to use these uh, to put along this beam here to bump things out an inch. And that one, and that one, so I got three of them. And a lot of people have said they weren't able to find these at Home Depot. They do have them there. You just got to kind of search around. But um, here's the SKU. I think this is the SKU here on the receipt. 09048931616136. This is how they list it at the store on the display. 1.0 inch by 4.0 inch. 
by eight foot full size strip. So you should be able to find it with that. I'm going to use these thick heavy duty screws to attach that to the wall. And they're uh, self drilling screws that are also um, galvanized so they won't rust. I ended up adding a few of these screws as well, just to double up. Um, it seems like these like really suck it in like a tighter fit, while the other thicker ones are gonna probably be good for uh, taking some of the heavier weight. But um, super solid, definitely not gonna move. And um, a lot of people ask me, why don't you use rib nuts? You can definitely use rib nuts. I just think it's, uh, an extra step that takes a lot longer and since some people are saying like oh you're making all these holes in, in the van it's gonna rust why don't you use rib nuts and then they make rib nut holes five times the size of these holes from the screws so those are gonna rust too <laughs> even if you paint it it's going to be rubbing off and stuff like that so Anyway, after we spray foam, insulate the whole van, um, that's a natural moisture barrier, and um, I don't think anything back here is going to rust anytime soon with the spray foam insulation. Quick update, I just added the one by threes along the bottom row here, all around the van. And uh, those are the regular one by threes, not the actual, these are just the regular one by three pine that you'll find at the Home Depot. Yeah. So now you can see what I'm going for here. These are gonna come down like that. Uh, this piece here was, uh, I think 71 and three quarters, and I had to cut a 45 at the top here, make it sit flat. We'll put another screw through the top. And then just uh, every about 16 inches, we'll put another one down. And that should um, allow me to clear almost all of this. And we'll clear that, and we'll have a nice flat wall all the way back. So this is the uh, furthest point out on the van right here. And you can see with this setup, it's uh, actually perfect. Just clears it perfectly. Our uh, shiplap will go over this like this. Here in the back, I'm gonna have the cutout for the bed. So I'm just gonna put this one piece all the way to the edge here. And I made it a little shorter because of this curve here. And then we're gonna have a 54 and a half opening to make room for the bed. Before I put this piece in, I'll just take this screw out because it might be hard to get to it later. So we will need to remove that. Now I'm dealing with the section where the bed cutout is. And I know my mattress is 54 inches wide. So I'm making the opening 55 inches wide. And I've measured from here to here, which is 55, and get it down here as well. And that gives me an extra half inch on each side for the shiplap, which is going to come in this way. So with the 55 opening plus the shiplap, I'll be exactly at 54. So I want to put my stud right here, and of course, it runs into that, so I had a notch for that thing right there. So I'm gonna screw it right on this line here, and that should be good. Now that the bed frame's cut out, just need to put a couple coming down this way, and then the, um, the cutout will tuck in here when I do the uh, shiplap. So what I'm using is the 45 degree pieces that I cut off from the top of these. Got a whole bunch of those cuts over there. So I've screwed one in here so I can make a template. And then I took my square, 
this is where it's gonna go in and kind of follow that angle and made a mark on that right there. And I'll cut this off and that'll be the template I use uh, to make a whole bunch of pieces on this side and over on this side here. more pieces coming up and I know I need 32 inches of clearance under, under the bed to uh, fit a mountain bike with the wheel off and the seat down plus two and a half inches for the width of the two by three plus half inch for the plywood top plus about a quarter inch for the finished flooring so I made this 35 and a quarter and I'm just gonna add a few at that height going across on each side and then the bed will come in like that okay well we're gonna call that fully framed and that'll pretty much do it for this episode next episode I'm either going to be putting in the max air fans on the roof or starting on the wiring after that it'll be the spray foam insulation so if you haven't already, please hit the like and subscribe button. That'll ensure that you see the next video, and I'll see you guys next time.